I didn't start liking blackberries till recently because I'm not gonna lie, they either remind me of a clump of ants or a little like, like a poo from a deer or something like that. Like some sort of wild animal poo. This is what they look like. It can't be debated. You know they're strange, but they're delicious. True story. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods, yeah. All right, y'all. So in today's subscriber sponsored request, we have one coming in from a Daphne D and she's looking for a nice brunch meal. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to kick things off nice and fresh to start with a berry bowl. So I got some blackberries here. Blackberries have always been weird to me, but lately in my later years, I've learned to like them. <laughs> For me, they were always just a visual thing. They just seem a little odd, that's all. But blackberries, blueberries, got some nice raspberries. And because it's winter where I'm at, slash the grocery stores are getting raided right now due to the lockdown, I couldn't find any fresh strawberries, so we had to go in with some frozen guys. But I am gonna do one thing, because these berries are not exactly in the season right now, and I do like a sugary berry, I'm just gonna hit it with a bit of sugar. Work them together, and basically just let them macerate a little bit, as a professional cooking term, macerate. But yeah, these will just sweeten up the deal a little bit, and uh, yeah, get those in a bowl. This nice little berry, berry blend. In a bowl off to the side. And that goes off to the fridge. All right, so the next plan of attack is something I've never tried, but like they say, there's a first time for everything, and that is air fried bacon. I usually use my oven, but you know what? I figured. This air fryer needs to be challenged right now with this bacon situation because I've never done it. And if it comes out amazing, then hey, it comes out amazing. So I want to give this a try. So I'm going to try 15 at 400 and see what kind of adventure that takes us on. All right, you guys, moment of truth. In my non-professional but fairly experienced opinion, I would say that air fryer bacon is working. It's pretty legit. It takes half the time as the oven, I will say that. But it is different. It's coming out looking a little different. I don't know, it's less glossy, maybe a little more dry seeming or something, like it sucks more fat. But it is looking good. It looks like it'll be perfect and the right amount of crisp and the right amount of flop but I would still say, if I really had to, that the oven is still major key, even though that's pretty nice, right? Anyways. And before we fully move on from that, I am just going to reserve this nice bacon fat grease for a trick later, a flavor trick later on down the line. All right, so I've had these two stray red potatoes lying around forever. So I would say that we need to have those become home fries. It just seems like the right move to do, right? Get them into nice little pieces so that we can chop them even further down into these little kind of matchstick squares. And then do this. And then we are left with a perfect little home fry hash square. 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 And that's what it's all about. There you have it. Two potatoes broken down for some home fry hash brown. All right, so the star of the show today is a croque madame sandwich, which is basically fancy for French grilled cheese with lots of fat and ham, essentially. So in order for this sandwich to be super legit, 
there is one component that is certainly required although all components are required but this is the piece de resistance basically and that is the silky white creamy beautiful bechamel sauce which goes on top which is a fairly simple sauce although you don't want to burn it because it is delicate but we start off with a roux butter low in a pan flour as well next just try to match your butter amount when you're making a roux butter to flour ratio should be fairly equal there we go we're just gonna cook out that floury flavor that's what we want to do here and then we come in with whole milk 325 whole milk and for me i'm just gonna go in with like a cup cup and a half to start and then see where this takes me all right so here we are you guys see coming together quite quickly almost looking cheesy there is no cheese in this it's just the milk the butter and the flour and then we're just gonna season it once we hit our desired thickness and I think we're pretty much there just silky smooth creamy couple shakes of salt and a pinch of nutmeg not a lot just enough now in order to make a beautifully authentic and legitimate croc madame you need a beautifully authentic and legitimate loaf of bread nice crusty sourdough and as you can see yes i got a little peckish when i got home i needed to try it this was last night not today but you know we need to cut ourselves two slices of this two hearty slices too we want them to be a good almost inch thick now this is also the part in the video where you guys remind me i need a bread knife so i'll just try to remember remember that for next time but i do need a serrated bread knife <laughs> but this should do so we cut ourselves some nice thick sturdy sourdough loaf perfect a thing of beauty come on now there are few more beautiful things in this world than an amazing baked loaf of bread such a simple thing but technically not but ingredients wise simple skill wise not simple all right, so let's go ahead and prepare this for glory. Lay down our slices of that beautiful bread. Grainy mustard, grainy Dijon mustard. Not too much, not too little, just enough. And we spread. Don't want it to be too thick. You just want it to be there in flavor town, just to accent everything, the ham and the cheese but not thick, you know, not, not, not a lot, not crazy. And I have already pre-grated some Gruyere cheese, beautiful Gruyere cheese. And that is the traditional white cheese used in this sandwich. Beautiful, amazing, delicious. And don't be shy, layer in there a real nice. All right, next up, required ingredient is ham and lots of it. I'm gonna do a half fold and lay like this you do it however you want to do it there's no right way this is just my way but we do want a good thick amount of ham in this when we cut into it we don't want to have a stingy little bit of meat that wouldn't be chill so we're going to use the entire pack and we're not going to feel guilty about it because we're treating ourselves to a dirty delicious sandwich all right, and the fun does not stop there. We go in with more cheese on top of this side. Go for an all-important squish, just to make sure everything's together. And then we're gonna take this sucker to the frying pan. All right, secret bacon fat moves time. I am going to cook these home fry potato hash browns in them and see how it turns out. All right, all right, all right. This is what I'm liking to see. We are coming along. Things are looking good now. We are getting that golden crisp bay color. We got movement. We got flick of the wrist action. We got it all, baby. All right, I think we're at that point. A little salt. And the pep. Definitely gonna have the pep. All right, so what is next? I would say it's time to deal with this sandwich, the main event, get this thing going. So we're gonna start off by buttering the one side quite well. Get all your edges and crevices and holes and everything, your nooks and your crannies. 
get in there. And I'm actually gonna do something a little tricky, and that is put the sandwich in with the pan upside down. And then we flip. And we get that in place. To work magic, we let that cook on that side while that's in there. We come to our other side, and now we butter this side. Uh-oh, code red. Code red, we've got smoke. Oh, a little high maybe on that heat. Not bad, not burnt per se. Pretty nice and crispy though. <laughs> like cool her down, slow that down. Man, you guys, this is gonna be so freaking good. <laughs> All right, we are toasted, so we must take this to the toaster oven now. All right. We're gonna come on to this little baking sheet here. And because that toasted up in the pan quicker than I thought, but the cheese isn't really quite melting, I'm gonna bake this for a little bit. I'm improvising on the fly. Normally, we would just add, you guessed it, more cheese to the top, and then we would broil this on. But I'm just gonna bake it for a little bit and let everything kind of come together a little more. But yes, you're seeing right, <laughs> more cheese. But into the of she goes for a little bit. See you soon. So while that's happening, we need to make our final finishing egg. Butta down. All right, this baby's looking perfect so far. Maybe a little butter based on the yolk. Looking beautiful. Hello, sir. Oh, moment of truth with the beautiful and perfect bechamel. Come on. Is it a thing of beauty? I think so. Egg to finish. A pinch of something green to finish it off. Couldn't find fresh chives, so we use dry. So that's it, folks. Croque Madame brunch for Daphne D is served. Let's get to this. All right, yo, what is good with y'all? Welcome to today's subscriber sponsored request video from an OG, always hyping me in the comments. That is. Daphne D, she hit me looking for some brunch food. She did suggest either a flight of Eggs Benedict or a croque madame. And I've never made or had even in my life a croque madame. So I figured I got to go there. Croque madame it is, Shh, sir. So as you saw come together, we have a steamy, hot, ham-filled lard bomb, essentially, to get to. And I think it's going to be amazing. But before we do that, we must pour... And she wanted me to have a nice AM beverage, a brunch beverage. And I just giggled at myself when I was looking at the store. I saw cranberry and apple, and I said, I've never combined them, and I don't know how it's going to be, but I want to make a crapple. Okay, so we're making a crapple, a cranberry apple juice. So we got some cranberry here, which I'm a fan of, but sometimes it do be a little bitter on my palette so that's why I want to blend it with an apple which might sound weird because I can't eat apples and that lends to this whole fruit bowl situation too is I told Daphne that I have fruit allergies out the yin yang and basically that means I can't eat most fruit I can eat citrus berries and melon that's it everything else I die essentially it's a slow death Anyways, we have our crapple here. I've never had a crapple before in my entire life, but let's try it together. <laughs> First hip face, squ squ squishy, scrunchy. That's good because, like I said, the balance. 
the sweetness combating the cranberry. I dig a crapple. So I added the bacon myself. I had it chilling and needed it uh, used up. And then, like I said, hash browns, those uh, potatoes I had just chilling were some extra food that I just needed to also use up. But I think the first thing we have to do is just try what we came here for, and that is this croc monstrosity more than anything. And you know that we have to go directly down the yoke and through the center for a cross section, I would say more than anything else is required. I would say if anything's required, it's definitely that move, okay? So let's open this up and see what we are <laughs> working with, bro. Don't play with my emotional state, okay? That is looking crazy inside. I'm so intrigued to know what this is going to be like. I mean, I guess I have a feeling, but you can't really know until you're in there. But okay. Up close and personal. The Yoki side. You got it all. You got everything. The crazy, thick, nice sourdough bread. Ham, cheese, egg. Let's do it. Wow. Whoa. Dude. I don't know how the French apparently stay slim with food like this oh yeah i forgot the mustards in there that's what that's what i forgot about that's what hit my taste buds mm. the cheese is actually more subtle than i even thought it would be like it's not a super salty cheese or anything so there's that like subtlety of the cheese and then obviously just the general richness you have the salty from the ham the bechamel just unites with the cheese to basically make a cheese sauce Right, because it's just the, the nutmeg comes through just lightly. These chives are actually saying something. Of course, the bread. Wow. But the mustard. is the secret it factor. It's the cut through all the fat and all that richness. The mustard is absolutely and totally required. All right, sugary berry bowl. See that? All those juices. That's what I mean when I say macerated in the beginning. The sugar, the added sugar. I don't know, it just activates the fruit somehow and makes them get release all that liquid like you could literally drink it and it's like this 
fruit juice concentrate, but nice and sweet because that sugar's in there. Mm. These blackberries are tart, pretty tart. I live in the tundra, so my fruit season is not a thing right now. That plays a factor as to why I sugared the shit out of these, because all the berries, all the fruits, they're kind of just a little underdeveloped, not exactly the right time of year. I should probably use a fork for this, or a spoon for this. And like I was saying earlier, I didn't start liking blackberries till recently because I'm not gonna lie, they either remind me of a clump of ants or a little like like a poo from a deer or something like that like some sort of wild animal poo this is what they look like it can't be debated you know they're strange but they're delicious true story just because we went down that adventure i wanted to investigate the air fryer bacon and i'm saying It turned out really better than I expected. Is it oven bacon? Not quite. It's damn close though. Just the right amount of crunch. You cannot go wrong. With this level of cook. Ooh, watch out, hash browns on a bacon. Works for me. All right, next up, these hashies. I always Cover my hash browns and ketchup if you don't. I don't know, that's just strange to me, but there we go. The bacon fat soaked cooked hash browns. They're just salt and pepper. I know some people add like paprika or cayenne and stuff, but I like them simple. Just like that. They're perfect, they're delicious. Mm. These came out way better than I thought they would. Hmm, those are slapping. Try those. All right, well, it would seem I need to make another crapple. Cause that was good, real good. Let's get back to this guy. So it's pretty wild to me that having worked in as many restaurants as I have, that I've never had a croque madame. Uh, I've worked in places where it certainly has been on the menu. Just never felt inclined.
inclined to give it a go, which is insane to me because how could you not want to eat this? You know? It's literally all the right things. But my lord, is it heavy. If you saw this thing in real life, this sandwich, this thing is like the size of my head. Easily weighs like a couple pounds. <laughs> So much cheese. Hefty bread. If I made it again, I might. Cut the bread just a bit smaller. For more manageable bites. I feel like it's maybe a little too thick. Should have went three quarters of an inch maybe. Because you do need the heft of the bread. You need it to hold up firm against everything else. Just need to do a little PSA here real quick. And that is that uh, after this sponsored video, I have eight more sponsored videos in line. And I will get to them all. But... I think that'll carry me out almost for the rest of the month, right? There's like two weeks left in this month. I got eight videos. Realistically speaking, I won't get them all done till probably the start of February. So if you're in that line, I have messaged you. Letting you know basically that. But this is just to be another follow-up just to let you know. They will all get all get done. It's just a matter of time and patience, really, and uh, the matter of I have this amount to do in this many days, essentially. But I'm excited for them all. Y'all are really pushing my cooking spirit slash boundaries, <laughs> or like, you know what I mean? Making me really get into the headspace of the cooking. So that's dope. I dig that. I'm somehow already extremely full but I definitely need a couple more bacon pieces and a bite or two of potatoes before I wrap up I don't know what it is some days I come in here and I can eat. Some days I come in here. And I just get full quick. I don't know. It's weird. And I'm not like I didn't eat since yesterday. Could be the fasting. But hey, that's another good thing about these videos is that at least you get the cooking, the trial of it all, and then I don't have to smash like a trillion calories. Because <laughs> I am trying to maintain not getting disgusting. You know what I mean? So, a great adventure, something I would make again, I would make a few adjustments, mainly the bread, and when I toast it in the pan, I'd just be a little more cautious, cautious with the heat, I was a little aggressive on the heat, bacon in the air fryer, comes out bomb. 
potatoes fried in bacon fat. Delicious. Macerated berries, also good, but I just can't take down anymore. So, oh yeah, and crapples. Make yourself a crapple. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Till the next one, take a piece of bacon for my appreciation for you being here. Take it as a little road treat dessert. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Stay true.